Welcome to WPL's virtual cooking class, Spring Risotto with Chef Kelsey. Chef Kelsey is a global based chef and educator with a focus on eating in the seasons and supporting her local community through private cooking classes and dinner parties. She is also the farm chef at Wright Lock Farm in Winchester, Mass, where she runs a, vari a variety of educational programming for people of all ages and creates delicious farm to table food experiences. Welcome, Chef Kelsey. Thank you. You make me sound so cool. And I know <laughs> I wrote that, but <laughs> still, it's nice to hear it out loud. Um, so hello, Hi. I'm Chef Kelsey, and I'm very excited to be here with you guys today. It's a rainy Saturday, which in my opinion is a perfect day for a nice comforting bowl of risotto. So I don't think the menu could have been any more perfect. Um, yeah, so... Like they said, I am the farm chef and kitchen manager at Wright Lock Farm, which is in um, Winchester, Massachusetts. So I run cooking programs. I do farm to table suppers. I bring in guest chefs. I work with kids. I do the whole gambit. And then I also have the pleasure of kind of doing things on my own, like this class for private dinner parties and home cooking events and things like that. So it's pretty fun. Um, I love working with farmers, obviously work on a farm. And I think that the, the thing that I love the most about it is that it creates this ability to really eat with the seasons um, and it makes it easier. I know it can be difficult when you're going to the grocery store and every single day you go there, regardless of the time of year, you're gonna find kind of the same thing. Um, because of our global economy. <laughs> but the, the pleasure in working at the farm and seeing kind of the produce that we have is learning about like the seasonality of different food, especially in New England. We have such a diverse um, growing season and we're able to have so many different things kind of pop up out of the ground, literally. Um, so yeah, I love what I do. I'm excited to be here today and we're gonna be making a spring risotto. Um, I talk a lot. So in this next hour, I'm probably going to be throwing a lot of different things at you guys. If you ever have any questions, regardless if it's about the recipe or vegetables or spring or food, anything cooking related, I invite you guys to ask. Um, you can always just put your questions in the chat. And then, yeah, I think that's kind of it. I think we're kind of just going to get started and go. Um, yeah. If you wouldn't mind just pinning my other screen for me. Oh, whoops, wrong one. Hold on, I can take care of it really quick. One second. There we go. And pin. Nope. I think it's all set. Ah, I only see the one up there. Uh, hold on, I'm bringing my IT guy over. He's gonna fix it. I think I've... <laughs> I think it's all set. Okay, awesome. Oh, hold on. We, I just wanted to put both side by side so they could see me. But while he figures it out, I'll just go ahead and get started. Um, so we're making risotto and it is a, oh, there it is. He's so good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and it's a rice dish. So it's an Italian dish um, and it's rice. So a little bit different than pasta. Um, and so this is risotto rice. It's a very specific grain called aborio. And I'm gonna put it up here so you guys can see it a little bit better. But they're really short and fat which is kind of great because what that means is they're also like super starchy. And so the risotto and the starch in that rice is what gives us that really creamy dish. So before we get started on that, we're gonna do one, one of my favorite things, which is called the mise en place. It is the French term and it means to put in place. So the reason that I love doing this when I first start cooking is sometimes if you like, don't take the time to chop and prep all your things. You'll be in the middle of cooking and you're sauteing your onions and you're like, okay, cool. These onions are good. They're ready for the next step. And then you realize, oh my gosh, I need garlic. I didn't even chop my garlic. 
Um, and so it can make cooking kind of stressful. And I am a firm believer that if we can take little steps to make cooking more enjoyable, we should do that. So that's where our mise en place comes in. And we are going to do that with our risotto vegetables. So the recipe I sent you guys um, calls for onions, but it is spring. And like I said, seasonality and leeks are coming up and I absolutely adore leeks. So I thought that I would change it up a little bit. And instead of doing onions, I was going to do leeks. Um, so I don't know if you guys have ever worked with it before, but this is a leek, the whole thing. Um, and first off, like when you get it, it's very dirty. So you have to clean it before you use it. So what you're going to do is you're going to chop off the top bit. It tends to be a bit more um, fibrous and hard. And then if you guys, I don't know if you can see, but you can already see like the dirt inside of there. So what you're going to do is chop it in half. And then you have all these layers. And I'm just going to take this over to the sink and open up the layers under the water. So you just kind of open it and peel it and wash it and you're gonna get all that dirt out. So I'm gonna do that really quickly. All right. So our leek is prepped and now it's ready for us to cook. So I'm gonna talk really quickly about some knife skills. All right. So this is my chef's knife. And the way that you want to hold a chef's knife is you take your thumb and your pointer finger and you're going to pinch the blade here and wrap your hand around it. So you guys can see, I'm going to put it here for you so you can see how I'm holding it. So I'm really choked up on my knife and on the blade. And you guys might say like, whoa, Kelsey, like that's, that's pretty close. Um, but the reason I'm holding my knife here and not here is that this makes my knife an extension of my hand. So it makes it so that I'm more in control of my knife. I'm holding it. It's secure. When you're holding it back here, I like invite all of you guys to try. You can feel the heaviness of the blade, but you're not really like supporting it. You're just kind of using it. So if you're here, it doesn't actually feel as heavy in your hand, which is pretty cool. Um, and it just feels really secure. And the other thing about it is that we're not gonna put our finger out on our knife. So if you guys look, my finger's on top of my blade, it's hitting my wrist. If I pinch, I have a full range of motion. So gripping it, not like this, we're not gonna put our finger out. That's on a paring knife. It helps with kind of like guiding that small knife to make sure you're more um, precise, I guess is the word I'm looking for. So we're gonna hold it just like this. The other thing about using our knife is that we are not gonna go like that. We're not gonna go up and down. This noise is actually bad. And the reason for that is if you're hearing that noise, you're only using one part of your blade. So this part of your blade is gonna get dull while the rest stays sharp. So we wanna use our whole knife. And we're gonna do a rocking motion. So you wanna rock with your knife. It also makes it, the blade is kind of like the way it's designed, it's supposed to go down like that. So it makes chopping a lot easier. So what I'm gonna do on these beautiful leeks, that I'm so excited to use is peel the first few layers. They're a bit tougher. They're more fibrous. I want to make sure that everything's kind of the same because we're going to be sauteing it. And if I have layers that are tougher than others, those layers will take a lot longer to cook. So I'm just going to get rid of them. If you guys see right here, this is my thank you for coming bowl. If you compost, it's your compost bowl. If you don't, it's your trash bowl. But I always put one with me when I'm cooking. And the reason for that is as I'm cooking and working and I have scraps, I just throw it in this bowl instead of having to go back and forth to the trash can or creating a big mess in my workspace. So it makes it so that I can have a really nice clean environment and everything stays neat. So what we're gonna do now is chop our leeks. I'm gonna do thin slices. Again, I'm holding it like this, and then I'm gonna rock back and forth with my knife and with my fingers. I'm kind of taking them and bear clawing it so that if it slips, I'm not getting on my fingers, I'm just hitting the knuckles. And here we go. I love leeks. Um, I think they're so good, especially with like butter and creamy dishes and they caramelize really well. So I was at the store yesterday and I saw these and I was like, you know what? We're going to change it up and we're going to do leeks. And that's one of my other favorite things about risotto. Um, I actually call it fridge trash food because it's so great when you have like a small amount of something in your fridge. So 
it's like probably one of the most versatile dishes. And if you think about it, like, okay, I'm looking in my fridge and I have half of a pepper and I have some onion and I have, you know, this little bit of asparagus, like, what am I going to do with these things? And risotto is a great option because you can just make this beautiful rice dish and then put whatever vegetables you want or whatever cheese you want. I've done Southwest risotto with jalapenos and um, pepper jack cheese. You could do really anything. It's kind of fun like that. So this one, because spring is here, I'm using my leeks. It's also gonna have asparagus, another perfect thing for spring. We're gonna roast some local mushrooms. Again, those start popping up in the spring. So we are feeling spring here. All right, so my leeks are all chopped. I've got my pan back here that I'm gonna to use to cook my risotto. And I'm just gonna turn it on, have a medium heat and let those that um, olive oil warm up just a little bit before I put this in. And then while I'm waiting for that, I'm gonna prep my, move this out of the way. I'm going to prep my garlic. So this is my garlic. I'd already peeled it. Um, you could buy pre-peeled garlic and my favorite way to chop it is sharpen my blade always away from me, put it down, heel of my hand, push. So if your skin is still on, this is great because it's going to break it up for you. So you don't have to worry about it and you can peel that skin right off. The other reason that it's great is it takes this round thing, smashes it so it's flat, which makes it easier to cut, round things roll. And then it also helps expel, expel some of those juices. So those juices are coming out to be super flavorful. And then I'm just gonna give it a rough chop, nothing fancy. That's the other thing I like about risotto. It seems super fancy, but it's really not. There's a couple techniques that you kind of have to get down in order to make it easy. But other than that, it's a really simple dish which is why it's one of my favorites. All right, there we go. So I've got my garlic and I've got my leeks and they're ready to go. I'm gonna put this in my olive oil and let it start cooking. Nice. I'm using my bench scraper, another one of my favorite tools in the kitchen. It just makes it really easy for me to pick it up and kind of move it across. Less work is always better. I'm gonna put my garlic in a little bowl just so I can get it out of the way. All right. Perfect. So our leeks are cooking. Our garlic is chopped. We have our risotto rice. The next thing we're gonna to prep to finish our risotto is I'm going to grate just a bunch of Parmesan cheese and then we're gonna get our lemon ready. All right. So again, this is a spring risotto, but regardless of the time of year I'm making risotto, I always put citrus in it. And the reason for that is it's, it is kind of a heavy dish when you think about it. Like it's starchy, it's creamy, doesn't mean it's not delicious but it's nice to add some citrus in there to really brighten it up and make it feel a little bit lighter and not quite so heavy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to prep my lemon. So I've washed it. I was reading actually yesterday about, um, which I normally wash it anyways. I washed it extra good because I was reading about wax on fruit. So always make sure that if you're buying fruit at the grocery store, you give it a good wash to get that wax off, especially because we wanna use this peel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna zest it. The reason for zesting a lemon or an orange or a lime or a grapefruit or whatever citrus you have is that most of the flavor of citrus is located in the oil and the oil is located in the skin. So what I'm gonna do, this is my little microplane. I've got a little bowl here. I'm just gonna really quickly zest my lemon and I'm gonna zest it until I get to the white. I'm gonna show you guys that white bit there. This right here is called pith and the pith is really bitter. So we don't want that. So we're literally just taking that top layer of skin. Oh, I hear sizzling on my leeks. And you know what I forgot to do? We're gonna give those leeks a pinch of salt. And the reason for that is whenever you're cooking onions or leeks or anything, and you first put it in that pan, you wanna add some salt because the salt helps extract that liquid. It'll help it cook faster. And it's also a way to start permeating flavor into whatever you're cooking. So I'm gonna give this a quick stir.
we go. This is actually my first time having leeks this year. So I'm really excited. It's another reason why I like eating with the seasons is it makes it so that when something like is coming into season and it's that time, it's so much more exciting. I will say I eat asparagus year round, but that's just because it's delicious and I'm obsessed with it. So what can we do the best we can? All right. So I'm just going to keep on zesting this. Go. Perfect. So I've zested it. I've got all that. And now always be careful. This is sharp. Another way to get rid of things is you can turn it upside down and just push. There we go. I don't want to miss any of my lemon zest. So I'm going to take it. Cool. And then we're going to juice it. So I'm going to roll my citrus. Always roll it when you're ready to juice it. It helps kind of loosen everything up in there. I'm going to cut it in half. And then my partner taught me this new trick that is like my new favorite trick. I teach it literally in all of my classes because I always use citrus, um, but it's how to juice it. So I've cut it in half and you guys are probably like, that's it, Kelsey, you cut it in half. Now you juice it. I've got my little juicer here, but there's a little tip or trick that you can do to make it easier and make it so that you're actually getting more of the juice out of the citrus. So what you do is you cut a tiny X, very tiny, and I'm not going very deep here. I'll show you guys here. I'm it's like not even half an inch, a little X. All right, little X. And then we're gonna juice it. So what that does is when you cut that X in there, instead of the citrus kind of folding in on itself when you juice it, it peels out, see? So I have all of this peeled out, which means I was easily able to get to all that flesh and all that juice and it went right in there. Like blew my mind when he showed me that. I was so excited. All right, and then I'm gonna juice this one as well. Oh my gosh. It's a good lemon squeeze. Pretty incredible. All right. So I've got my lemon juice. That is my a great tip. Are looking... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I say that is a great tip. I've never heard that. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. yeah. I couldn't believe it. So, and actually this is something I'm really interested in. So I'd love to just kind of chat on it really quickly. It's different. What? Oh, my partner's over there being like, you're welcome. That's <laughs> so funny. Um, I, it's, it's the whole idea of like, this is why I love cooking with people, right? Because you all learn these different things and a lot of it is cultural. So I did not grow up using like a ton of citrus or my family didn't because we're, you know, Pennsylvania Dutch, you know, Dutch country. There's not a ton of citrus there. My partner is Dominican. He's first generation and he lived in New York city in a Dominican neighborhood and also made the lemonade at Yankee stadium. So like they're no strangers to citrus. It's a really big part of their diet and the big part of what they do. So it's not surprising that you know, in this culture, all of his friends knew it because it's part of what they do. They use citrus. So through time they've devised this way to be like, oh, this is how you should do it. Cause you get the most out of it. Um, and I just, I love that. It's one of my favorite things about cooking and like different cultures and how they devise these ways to use the, the food that's native to them. Um, and then being able to learn those things and just incorporate it into your cooking. It's so cool. Uh, so yeah, that's my little feel about it. I've been like really on that lately. <laughs> so my leeks are looking great and don't worry. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring my second camera over here. So you guys can see like the risotto making process as we're doing it, but we're not quite ready yet. We're going to grate some Parmesan cheese. Um, Again, with risotto, what is so cool is that you can use a little bit of everything. So if you don't have enough Parmesan cheese, you could say, all right, but I've got some mozzarella. So throw some mozzarella in there, or I've got this Fontina, or um, I've done risotto with smoked Gouda before. And that was like delicious. Um, so again, like it's super versatile. I have Parmesan here. I'm just going to grate my Parmesan block. This is another microplane. It's a different, um, different size. I use this one because since it's bigger, it makes grating faster. All right, so we're just gonna grate. Hey, Henry, photos, photos. Yes. All right, so we need about a cup of cheese. Just 
You could also use pre-grated cheese if you wanted. I like grating my own cheese. Um, I just think it tastes fresher. It's a little bit better in terms of the texture, but if you want to save some time, you're more than welcome to just do this. And that's like another thing actually about kind of like cooking and saving time. If there are other ways you want to save time, uh, example was like garlic. Garlic sometimes takes a while to chop, right? So sometimes what I'll do is I'll go and I'll buy all the peeled garlic at the grocery store. And then I'll put it in my food processor and I'll blitz, blitz, blitz until it's all chopped. And then you just put it in a little container like this and cover it with olive oil and you can put it in your fridge. And whenever you need, you have chopped garlic, maybe add a pinch of salt if you want. So it's pretty great. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and add my cheese in with my lemon juice and my lemon zest because these things all go in at the very end and I don't like doing dishes. So I'm going to bring it together and I'm going to use my nifty little bench scraper to help me pick up all that cheese. Okay. So that's ready to go. Oh, and my, and these are starting to get browned. All right. So those are gonna finish up. It's gonna be like maybe one more minute and then we're actually gonna move the camera so you guys can watch the next steps in the risotto making process. Um, but what I wanna do is I just wanna share while we're cooking our risotto and getting it ready, what are the other things that we're gonna be doing? So this one is gonna have roasted mushrooms and asparagus. So these are local mushrooms. Um, there's a great mushroom grower in my area and I'm lucky enough to be friends with her because I make friends with people who do cool things with food. Um, so these are like gorgeous oyster mushrooms that were just picked. And I'm just gonna kind of like break them up into bite-sized pieces and then just roast it on a sheet pan. Um, I just want to make sure that we're good over there. So I'm going to demo it with just this one really quickly so that way you guys can see it. And then we're going to move the camera. So I'm just chopping this. These are oyster mushrooms. And all I'm going to do is give them a slice in half. And then I'm going to put them on a baking sheet with that sliced side down, little salt, little olive oil, and just roast it. And those are going to be really yummy to put in. And maybe when they're done, I'll chop them finer. Maybe I'll leave them nice and big as like a little garnish. I'm not really sure. We'll find out when we get there. Another cool thing about cooking for yourself is you can kind of decide what you want it to be and what you want it to look like. All right, so we're gonna go on a little ride. Buckle up everybody. There we go. All right. So as you guys can see, the leeks are starting to get brown. There's some caramelization happening. They're looking really yummy. And then next to me right here, I have my stock. And so what's in my stock is literally just this vegetable broth. But if you have chicken broth or something like that, you can do that. Um, and I have it warm because we want our stock to be warm when we add it to our risotto. That way we're not bringing the temperature down. It's more of an even temperature. So it'll cook faster. Cause that's one of the things people say, right? Risotto takes forever. It really doesn't. You just gotta do little things. So I just added my garlic. I'm going to add another pinch of salt I'm Gonna add some pepper. And then this red pepper flake has just been calling my name all day. So I'm gonna add some of that. You don't have to, it's up to you. This is just gonna give me a little bit of a kick. Okay, I'm gonna add a lot. I'm feeling spicy today, guys. All right, and then stir that up. Awesome, so I'm gonna give that about 30 seconds. While I finish up my mushrooms, I think I'm gonna leave this one and save it for lunch tomorrow because I have lots of mushrooms here. So this should I'll be- I have a question for you. The pot that you're using on the stove, is that a Dutch oven? 
It is a Dutch oven. This is actually a great question. And I'm glad someone asked. Um, it is a Dutch oven. You don't have to use a Dutch oven if you don't want. I just love this pan and I love the size. You could use um, like a regular pot if you wanted. The only thing that I would say is that you want to find one that's wide. Like it doesn't need to be deep. You want it wide. And the reason for that is you have more surface space in which to cook. So your risotto is going to have a larger surface, which means again, it's going to cook faster. So I always use, this is actually like my risotto pan, um, but it could really be any, you could even like, if you don't have anything like that and you just have like a big cast iron pan with some like sides, use that really simple. All right. So our leeks are ready. Our garlic is done. We've added all of our, those little some spices in there. And now we're going to add our rice. So what we're going to do is we're adding our rice and we're going to toast it. And when I say toast, I don't mean we're going to get it brown. What we're going to do is we're going to warm it up. So I just mixed it with everything and we're coating our rice with oil and we're warming it up. And the reason for this is it's going to make it so that when we add whatever liquid we're adding first, I'm adding wine. If you don't drink wine, just start with stock. When I add that wine, I don't want my rice to just like quickly absorb it and get all mushy. I want it to kind of have this coat so that it can slowly absorb. So I just added that. I'm going to let it go for, I don't know, 30 seconds or so. Just let it get together. I'm going to come over here, finish this. Got my little sheet pan. I'm going to just toss my mushrooms on it. I kind of want to cook the rest of the mushrooms. I don't know. Does anybody have an opinion for me? Should I do it? Should I leave them? All if, right. if you cook them now, um, would they be like soggy tomorrow to use? Or? No, not at no. all. Oh, okay. Nope. It's purely just more like Actually, you know what? I am going to cook them now because then if I don't use them all, I have cooked mushrooms and I can have that with my breakfast. I love like mushrooms and eggs and all that. So, and again, I'm just giving this, like, these are huge mushrooms. So I'm just kind of giving them like a big chop. And what's cool is as they cook, they're going to shrink. All right. Actually, that looks great. And then for my mushrooms, I'm just giving them a drizzle of salt and then I'm gonna give them here, I'll put it here so you can see. Look at that. Salt and then a little drizzle of oil and then always toss. And so the reason that I'm making sure that I toss it is I want, oh, he doesn't wanna go. I wanna make sure that there's oil and salt kind of evenly distributed on all of my mushrooms. I don't want just some mushrooms to be seasoned. I want them all to be seasoned. All right, and then I'm gonna stick this in the oven. And that's gonna go maybe seven minutes. Next, I'll get the asparagus ready. But first, let's give our rice a stir and see how it's going. Oh, this is great. All right, so my rice is all warm. I might've left that longer than I would recommend you guys leaving it at home because I got distracted, but it's still good. Now what I'm going to do is I've got some wine here. So I'm going to pour my wine in and I'm going to stir that up. And we're going to cook it until all our wine is absorbed. So we're cooking out the alcohol, but we're keeping the flavor. And this is actually a really good thing to think about when you're cooking with wine. Um, I do not buy cooking wine because when you're using an alcohol to cook, what you're doing is you're cooking out the alcohol and leaving the flavor. So if you buy this cheap wine that like you wouldn't really drink anyways, what you're going to get is that flavor in your dish. So I don't buy like nothing that I get is super expensive or fancy, but I make sure that whatever wine it is, it's one that I would drink. And it kind of like works two ways because I get the wine that I get to cook with. I get to drink that wine while I cook. And then I get to have that wine with my dinner and it kind of all pairs nicely together. Um, all right, so that's absorbed. And now it's time to add our stock. And this is the only tricky part about cooking risotto. It's the slow add of your stock and the stirring method. So I'm gonna mix all that up. And I'm gonna add about half a cup of stock to start. 
So I'm just gonna pour that in and stir it up. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cook it until that stock absorbs and then we're gonna add more. So the question is, how do you know when it's time to add more stock? And the answer is pretty easy. Um, I like to say like, pretend like your spoon is Moses' staff. You're like, you're parting the risotto sea is what I say, right? So when I move it, that liquid just kind of flows right in. So there's gonna come a point where I move it and the liquid doesn't just flood back in. It kind of stays out for a bit. And that means the liquid's mostly been absorbed and I can add more. The other thing about making risotto is you don't wanna stir it really fast. Cause if you're stirring really quickly, what's gonna happen is you're just, I'm gonna turn it down. This is a medium heat, by the way, guys. You're cooling down the temperature. So, oh, do you guys see here how I pull it and I can see white for a while and then it floods in? That's perfect. That means it's time to add some more stock. We're gonna add that in. Great, I'm gonna give it a stir and then I'm really quickly gonna get my asparagus ready. The asparagus and the mushrooms or whatever, like you're gonna add in, that's something that you guys could prep in advance. So you guys could actually prep that a couple hours before or the day before, and then just warm it up, or you could do it like I'm doing it. So with asparagus, you're gonna hold it and snap. And what you're doing is you're making sure it's gonna snap where it gets tender. So all those like really tough woodsy bits are on this end. And up here, it's all nice tender asparagus. So I don't cut it. I kind of let the asparagus tell me where to go. And sometimes if I'm like, I'm in a hurry, I'll do like a bunch of spears, but it's kind of nice. So I've got my asparagus. And again, you're just quick snap. Your asparagus will tell you where. I don't know if you guys saw also, I store my asparagus in water. Give this a stir. So, the reason for that is asparagus is a vegetable. It requires water to grow and all that. And if you leave it like in a bag, it can get slimy or sometimes it gets soft. So what I do is when I come home, I cut off the ends of my asparagus and I put it in a little jar with water and put that in my fridge and it makes your asparagus last longer. So this is pretty great. <laughs> I don't, you know, food waste. Sometimes you forget the asparagus is there and it's nice to know it lasts a little bit longer for you. All right, just like with the mushrooms, tray right here. Adding a little olive oil. Pausing to stir my risotto. Stirring the risotto is very important. Give it a little stir. Once I put my asparagus in. We're gonna give it some more stock. It's coming together pretty quickly. All right, sprinkle of salt and, and it's gonna go. Oop, put the camera in a bad spot. There we go. All right, so now our asparagus is going, our mushrooms are going and our risotto is on its way. And as you guys can see, I'm moving my spoon and I can see that white and then it starts to flood in. Awesome, I'm gonna add some more liquid. Perfect. We don't wanna add all the liquid at once because then it's just like we're boiling it and it's gonna get really mushy. So what we're doing is we're slowly adding that liquid. We're slowly cooking that risotto rice. And then the other thing is, is as we're moving it and it's cooking in that liquid, it's releasing starch, which is gonna help it be nice and creamy, which is what we want. So, oh, let it come back up to my simmer. Just a little simmer. And then the other thing, I know that I said, we're not gonna like stir really, really quickly, but you wanna do like a figure eight motion. It's kind of very, um, it's very soothing. I'm gonna move this just a little so I have a little bit more space. There we go, that's better, awesome. So I'm just doing this beautiful little figure eight motion can become very meditative after a while. Just moving it around, letting it absorb. You could use any type of stock you wanted. Um, I'm a big fan when I cook a chicken, I'll always save my bones. When I'm um, cutting like 
onions and celery and carrots. I'll save like my peels or the celery ends or my onion skins. And I put all that stuff in just a freezer safe bag and it just kind of lives in my freezer. And then when I need stock, I can really quickly make stock. And all it is, is throwing those odds and ends into a pot of water, adding some salt, maybe peppercorns and a bay leaf if you feel fancy and bringing it up to a boil and then just letting it simmer. And I'll do that and let it simmer for like the whole entire day, as long as I'm home, of course. And what that does is it just creates this really lovely broth. And then I freeze my broth so I don't have to worry about it. Um, but I'm also human and don't always have time to cook. So my other go-to is the better than bouillon, um, paste that you like get at the store and it lives in your refrigerator. And I use a very little bit, um, and it works great. So I'm actually, that's what I'm using for this. Cause I didn't have any stock in my freezer. All right. Keep stirring it looking good. And this is a great dish too, that, um, is good for parties. So you can, there's actually a couple things that you can do with it. I did a farm to table supper once, um, my first one actually, and I decided to do risotto. So I made risotto for like 35 people, um, which is a lot of risotto. But what was great is I actually made it ahead of time, like a few hours before the event started. And then you can cool it in like on a sheet pan or in a Tupperware container and you cook it until almost done. So like you don't add the last bit of stock, right? And then when it's time for your event, you just put it right back on the stove, warm it up, add the last of your stock, and then you're good to go. You have really beautiful risotto ready to impress anybody. All right. We are parting the risotto C. So we're going to add some more. It's coming together so nice and quickly. I love it. There we go. Excellent. Great. I'm gonna check on my mushrooms. Mushrooms do not take long. Oh, they are looking great. I have my oven at 400 degrees, nice and warm. Let's see how these mushrooms are. Oh, yum. So see the mushrooms shrank, but they're actually done. They're cooked. It only took a few minutes. It was not long. My asparagus will not be far behind. So I'm gonna move my mushrooms to the side. I'm gonna come back to my risotto, just give it a stir. And it's getting like bigger and bigger essentially. Like we're having more and more volume because that rice is absorbing more and more liquid. It's getting nice and plump. So then the question becomes, well, how do we know when it's done? And the answer is actually not when you're out of stock, um, which could be confusing, uh, except it just means we have to taste our food. So when we're cooking our risotto, we have kind of like this finite set uh, amount of liquid that we're going to be adding to it. But depending on things like the temperature and the altitude you're at and stuff like that, the amount of liquid that you actually need varies. So what we're looking for is we're going to taste it and it needs to have a tiny bit of bite, like just a tiny, think like al dente, al dente pasta, right? It has this tiny little bite to it. It's still nice and soft. We don't want mush in our mouth. So what I'm gonna do is after I get this kind of absorbed, I'm gonna take a quick taste and see how it's doing. Give it a stir. I am taught this class during the height of the pandemic, my classes were online and I taught this class and um, I actually had a woman from Australia join, which was hilarious because she was there at breakfast time. So she made breakfast risotto, <laughs> which I think is actually a great idea. Other things that are great about the risotto, um, do you guys know, I don't know if you know like Arancini, which are like those 
fried Italian balls with like the cheese or the sausage in, and then you dip it in sauce. Absolutely delicious. Those are just risotto balls. So what I'll do sometimes if I make a bunch of risotto and then I have a lot left over, I actually just make arancini with it. And all that is, is, you know, maybe cooking it a little bit longer to get rid of all that extra liquid. And then you just put a piece of cheese in like a, put, put a, a bit of it in your hand cold piece of cheese, roll it into a ball, and then you can freeze those balls. And then when you're ready for arancini, you just give it a bread coat, like a coat, a bread crumb coating got there. And then you can fry it and you're good to go. All right. Ooh, speaking of good to go, we're going to see how our risotto is doing. Mm, nope. It's still very crunchy. So we're going to keep going. Ooh, but that heat I put in there is great. Give it a little bit longer and then I'll add a little bit more stock. There we go. I added a little water to my, um, to my broth because I tasted it and it was tasting a little salty, which can happen when you use bouillon and things like that. It's a really high salt content. So you have to kind of be careful when I make it. I don't really listen to what the label tells me. I stir it until it looks kind of like light tea. Um, but I just tasted it and it was tasting pretty salty. So I was like, all right, I'm going to add a little bit of water to my broth that I made. And then that way it should balance out that saltiness. So we don't want an over salty dish, especially because we still have all that beautiful Parmesan cheese to add and Parmesan is very salty. So we just want to make sure we're balanced there. I'm going to check on my asparagus. Oh, lovely sizzle. I'm giving it a quick stir. It's looking nice. Keep going. It's actually one of my favorite ways to prepare asparagus. Super simple, but just roast it and you're done. All right, clean up my station a little. And I'm not stirring it the whole entire time, whisking it around. I'm going back and forth every, like taking little breaks. And the reason I'm taking little breaks is because then it gives it time to like warm up to a higher temperature. Even though I'm stirring slowly, we're still adding air and disrupting like the flow of the cooking. So it brings the temperature down. If you don't have a pan that's wide like this, you can really use anything. It might just take a little bit longer to cook. Okay. I think the other thing that's kind of cool too, um, risotto is becoming like kind of more popular as like a thing for people to cook at home. So you can find a Boreo rice more easily in the grocery store. I remember like, five, 10 years ago, you kind of had to go to either like Whole Foods or like, you know, only certain grocery stores had it, but now so many different brands um, carry it. So you can really find it anywhere, which makes it a really easy thing to make at home. There we go. You can smell the asparagus. Mm. 
we're getting closer. Still has a bite, like too much of a bite, not like the little give al dente. Ooh, it's spicy. Almost ready for more liquid. I think the other thing too that always like shocks me when I make risotto is how much it really does grow in terms of volume. And then you add in like all of your little extra things you want to put in your risotto and it just grows even more. Did I get rid of my thing? I did. I got rid of my little, my little scooper. I'll grab another one. Okay, put some more liquid in. So now I'm getting close to the end. So I'm going to be a little bit more conservative with the liquid I'm adding in because I don't want to add too much. So we're going to do just a little bit less at a time, which means that you'll be adding the liquid a little bit more frequently. Okay. All right, let's check on that asparagus. Nice. That looks great. So I'm going to put my asparagus on my cutting board and give it a little chop because when you're putting things in your risotto, you want to think about how it's going to feel in your mouth. So if you pick up a whole sphere of asparagus, it's not going to be very comfortable to eat. So what we're going to do is cut it into bite-sized bits. We're going to give that a stir. Again, always making sure that we're paying attention to our rice. Super simple, just needs a little attention and a little love. There we go. Beautiful. All right. And then my asparagus, it's hot. It just came out of the oven. So I'm gonna use my tongs. And just kind of hold it. Give it a nice chop. It's not even, that's okay. There we go. So now my asparagus is kind of in bite-sized bits. Stir that risotto. If you guys can believe it. We've only been cooking like a little over 30 or so minutes, maybe 40, maybe 40. And we're already almost done. This dish pairs really well with protein um, or if you're vegetarian, other vegetables. So some examples are crispy skin chicken thighs are great. Um, you could do seafood is really good with risotto, um, pork, really anything. So traditionally here, what we'll do is we'll add some like crispy skin chicken thighs, or um, if we're feeling the vegetables, we'll do like a cauliflower steak or something like that. There we go. The other thing is, as we're getting close to the end, we want to make sure that there's still liquid left when it's done. Guess what? We're done. It's there. It's perfect. You bite it. You can still know that you're eating like things of rice, but it's not hard or crunchy. And I still have liquid left, which is great. I still, I might even add just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit more because we want that liquid. And the reason we want the liquid is it's going to make it so that we can um, have like that creamy, saucy risotto. If all that liquid is gone, then you're just left with kind of like a ball of risotto, which is great for Arancini, but we're having risotto. All right. So I'm going to bring this over. I'm also going to move the iPad again. We're going to come back here. There it is. All right. So our rice is done. It looks great. You remove it from heat and now it's just putting, it's like a little sauna. <laughs> Um, and now it's just putting the rest of our stuff in there. So we have that Parmesan cheese, the lemon juice, and that lemon zest. I have the asparagus. And then we 
have these mushrooms. I think I'm gonna save a couple of my mushrooms just for plating purposes. All right. We're gonna stir up all that yumminess. Oh, it looks so good. It smells so good. I'd say that's probably the one issue with doing virtual programming is you guys don't get to smell it, but you get to make it at home and then you'll smell it there. All right, that looks perfect. So we're gonna give that a taste. Always taste your food. You wanna taste for salt and of course pepper if you want pepper. It's really good. I'm gonna give it a little bit of pepper. The lemon is so fresh. A little pepper. Stir it up. And there you go. We have a beautiful dish of risotto. You can plate it up however you like, put whatever protein you want on top or just eat it like this. The choice is totally yours. And again, one of the things that I just love about the risotto as any meal is that you can really put anything in it. You know, if you're Sunday and, you know, risotto and wine or no wine, but like vegetable broth, things like that, this type of rice is something that you could really just have in your pantry. And then if it's a Sunday and you have a few things left over and you're trying to figure out what to do, you can make a risotto. It looks so delicious. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad oh, you think it does. so. And I always thought risotto took such a long time, so I've never made it. Um, yeah. So yeah, well, now I can do that. That's the whole point of like demystifying food, right? And cooking, you might, you see something and you're like, it's going to take forever or it seems like really difficult. And so you don't even try, um, right. but risotto, right. yeah, it's super simple. And again, like just so versatile, which is another one of my favorite things about it. I mean, don't eat risotto every day, <laughs> but it could very right. easily be like a monthly meal situation. Um, yeah, I like and that's it. Add different vegetables to it. So I'm with Tish. I'm definitely going to try this. Yeah, please do. And again, like the recipe you're going to get from me doesn't call for leeks. It calls for an onion, but I saw the leeks and I wanted that. So that's what I did. Right. Um, and it really is like whatever vegetables you like, whatever protein you like, you could like shrimp would be really good with risotto. <laughs> um, you could do like maybe shrimp and peas and like Ooh. maybe, you know, like things like that. And, you know, I'm sorry. No, I'm going to say that sounds good. The shrimp with peas, right? You could do the lemon zest and instead of asparagus and mushrooms, use frozen peas and like throw those in at the end, like you would everything else. And you could do some shrimp with it. Um, salmon is really delicious with risotto. If you like salmon, yeah, literally anything you could even like, if you're feeling really fancy, you could do pancetta or bacon and you could cook that first. And then instead of using olive oil, once you remove your crispy pancetta and bacon, you can use that oil to cook those onions or those leeks or whatever you're using. And then at the end, you can top it with some like crispy bacon bits. So again, yeah, super easy, super fun, super versatile. Does anybody have any other questions? Yeah. Any other questions? Um, no, I think you shared a lot of good tips um, with the chef's knife and how to zest the lemon with the um, cutting the X in it and um, yeah, and how to crush the garlic. Some really good tips. Thank you. I love talking and teaching. So yeah. that's what I'm here, here for. Um, yeah. Tish has a question. Um, what, will you be cooking in the library when we open for in person? So I am not sure. I mean, yeah. possibly. I can't say <laughs> yes and I can't say no. We'll have to see. Yeah, we're we're hoping, um, well, our next one in May um, is still going to be virtual. The summer pins and Ella, um, that's going to be May 21st, same yep. time, 2.30 to 3.30 is Saturday. But we hope um, starting in June that we can have in-person classes. It was just such an unknown. Well, um, I, I mean, honestly, yeah. like I said, I do cooking classes in person. Like I totally feel that it's really difficult. It's hard to kind of know what the right choice is. Right. Um, like you said, I think we would have had to really limit it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when like food is involved. So, right. Right. Yeah. But, so, yeah. but you know, hopefully, hopefully once you guys get your in-person classes back, I can make a, make a trip out to Worcester and do a class with you guys. Yeah, that would be wonderful. We'd love to have you. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you guys so much. You're going to get the recipe, um, with the packet, right? 
Yeah, I think it was sent out in the confirmation, uh, the reminder email. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. So you guys have the recipe. Um, and then you also have my, like my social media and my email. Yeah. And I always say to my clients, if you guys ever have questions, please reach out. I'm happy to answer them. You can email me, you can message me on Facebook or Instagram. I'm here to help you and answer all your cooking questions. Thank, Thank you. And, um, yes, all your, the links to your website and social media was in the handout and, uh, on our, we will be posting the YouTube video, uh, the recording of this on our website, and that will also have a link to the handout. Perfect. Awesome. So, well, thank you guys so much. It was lovely you. working with you. And thank you, photographer, videographer, your tech yeah. guy. <laughs> <laughs> he took some photos. I'll send them your way. <laughs> thank you. Great. Have a good one. Thanks. You too, Chelsea. Thank yeah, you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.